ring through the bells. It's six o'clock, so I'll call the meeting to order at six. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of June 6, 2014. So, so I, I, I'll make the motion that we accept the minutes for the June 2nd, 2014. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I would like to request that on the present listing that you yes. include Kyle. Did I not include Kyle? You did not include Kyle, but he well, made a motion. So yeah, he, he made a motion for no, the absentia, but... He should have been in there. Okay. okay. Is there any other discussion about the minutes? No, no, I was, yeah, yeah. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as correct okay. sig signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? The motion passes. Uh, additions and deletions? I would like to add under old business uh, finishing the town hall heating system. Does anybody else have anything else? They would like to add um, or delete? Uh, we'll still delete the compactor, that it'll shorten up or something. Okay. Because I don't have anything for that yet. Take that off? Yeah. Change of roads, just got to verify it real quick. Yeah. All of this truck Well, we can, we can add that. Is there anything else that needs to be changed? All right, then let's go ahead and. Run through the warrants. Okay, relatively quickly. Yes, we will. Really quickly. I make a motion for payroll warrant number six one six zero one. Oh, six one six zero one. Yes. Yes. For nine thousand four hundred ninety-six dollars and forty cents. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying payroll warrant number 61601 in the amount of $9,496.40 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, number two warrant, uh, second one is uh, warrant number 61603 out of the general fund. Well, actually, it's 61603. Six zero three plus plus all oh, six, six one six, six one, one, zip, one off right out of the general fund for a total of seventy five hundred and twenty dollars and one cent. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Let me clarify that there there is a warrant number three and three A that have been added together to right. the to come to that total. They're both out of the general fund. So uh can you give me a number seventy five hundred and seven thousand five hundred? Twenty dollars and one cent. All those in favor of paying warrant number 61603 and 61610 from the town general fund in the amount of $7,520.01 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Warrant number 61604, equipment fund for $14,537.11. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? No. All those in favor of uh, paying one warrant number 61604, which is from the equipment fund, in the amount of $14,537.11, signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Warrant number 61605, general fund, four. One thousand two hundred seventy-seven dollars and fifty-three cents. Second. Second. Any discussion? No. I just like to note that this warrant is actually uh, the refund checks. The, the for refund tax. checks for overpayments of taxes. Just so everybody's aware. Yeah. But it's coming out of the general fund. Okay. All those in favor of paying more than six one six zero five in the amount of one thousand two hundred seventy-seven dollars. And 53 cents from the town general fund signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. All right. Warrant number 61606, general fund for $226,235.94. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, again, this is, the this is this is this is a repayment of the line of credit for the end of the fiscal year. So, hearing no discussion, all those in favor of paying warrant number six one six zero six in the amount of two hundred twenty six dollars two hundred thirty five. 
$226,235.94 in the town general fund signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. Warrant number 61607, general fund for five $553,865.86. Uh, any discussion? I believe that's probably what the school paid. Uh, that's this payment to Leland Gray and to the elementary school, the final yeah. fourth quarter payment. <coughs> Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of paying warrant number 61607 in the amount of $553,865.86 from the town general fund, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Warrant number 61608. Out of the equipment fund for $14,657.40. This would be the back off, back off, back off payment. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying warrant 61608 in the amount of $14,657.40 from the equipment fund uh, signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. All right. Warrant number 61609, highway funds, $10,000 and $375.02. Oh, okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying warrant number 61609 in the amount of $10,375.02 uh, from the highway funds signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Bostrom. You could give your report first and I got a whole list of questions for you. I got a whole list of questions. Would you want to do your report first? No, I can do the question. Ah. Uh, questions. This is this is a variety of different things, different people, different projects. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, the Deer Ridge Culvert and Stone Arch Bridge repair, repair. Is there any plan in place for either one of those? Stone Arch Bridge and who? Deer Ridge Valley Stone Arch Culvert or the Stone Culvert? Deer Ridge Road. Deer Ridge Road. Oh, yes, yeah, June twentieth. Um, I'll be getting the hydraulic study. From the state, but once I get the hydraulic study, I have to get together with Mr. Todd and the and Artifact. Oh, that's on the that's on the culvert. That's on the culvert. Yes, the stone art or the stone stone culvert. Stone culvert. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, did you happen to catch wind of the fact that Mr. Marshall was in and relaying his um, desire to see that remained stone? Well, on the historic portion. on Deer Ridge. No, yes. On the historic. Yeah. Well, that's no, um, it could remain stone, we'll see what he says, maybe we can just extend it with concrete and leave the stones on it. Okay, that he was pretty adamant about the fact that he would like to see that remain stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's saying it's, it's an historical thing. And you know, speaking of stone, our stone arch bridges, we have money, we should have money in the account for some repairs on us. We do. And um, that was not my job to have that done, but if you want me to get involved with that, I can, but that wasn't. Who's, who was responsible for the uh, bridge repair? David was looking. David was looking at uh, uh, what kind of repairs they needed. and talking to some masons about that, and it's something that didn't happen last year in part to save money on the taxes, but it just didn't happen. The money's also in the budget again this year, but there is concern about it. There was. Charlie brought up very much a concern about the one over on West Hill Road for right. the, that work, and and I feel that. If you're willing to do that, Kurt, we need to get that taken care of. Sure. I can get the ball rolling on that. I just wasn't taking out my hands. Listen, I don't know anything about it, so I'm just going to plead ignorance and move on. How's that? Uh, but, okay, so you're going to take care of both those pieces. But uh, just to relay on that Deer Ridge Stone Arch, um, I was actually talking about, I talked down to VTrans about that, and they uh, said to our best bet would maybe look into maybe restoration monies. There might be grant money for that if we wanted to go down that route. But well, let, me, let me see what the gentleman says. Yeah. Because it might not even meet hydraulics and it might need to be enlarged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it handled our 125 year flood in our Q125. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it does hemlock lots of rot out of the Okay, the next thing on the list is, uh, is there is it time to do the closeout on the gravel pit logging job? Or can we get that closed out? Yeah, um, I talked to uh, Mr. Titus about that, and, um, and David was also involved with that. And what we had in our contract, I didn't write the contract. I mean, he left it pretty much the way he left it. He did, he did an okay job picking it up, and, and that's pretty, he, and our contract did not really put back to previous conditions. So what it is is what it is, and we can close out on that. Huh? We can. Okay, so Craig, is there some type of paperwork to ask yeah, you about? Yeah, I just need to know what that means. There's nothing to get on. That's okay. awesome. Okay, the next thing on the list are the curbstones for the library. Mm -hmm. Is there any plan to get those in? Because the, the trustees are rather adamant about getting them set. Yeah, we'll get them this summer. Okay, but no specific timetable? So, mm -hmm. so we can basically assure them that it's going to happen? Is before, what it, before school starts. Before the snow flies? School starts. Okay. Okay, and what's the plan for roadside mowing? That's on my list tonight, too. I got the, I got the contract for it. I reserved a track for it, which I did last year. Mm -hmm. That was our plan. It's for $7,200, which was the same price as last year, I believe. And I had the contract at the town garage, and I just got to get the okay for you guys. I'll sign it and fax it up to them. Okay. You want to revisit that, or do you want to do it now? Looks I'd like to see the details of the contract, yeah. if, if at all possible. That's from Tanco. Huh? That's from Tanco. Yeah, same as we had. Yeah. yeah. I think I'd like to see the details too, but we don't want to be holding it off either. No. And they're talking to other gentlemen from other towns about how they put it off for bid and stuff, and they got one bid, and I don't want to talk about that now because we have problems. Well, then, could you make sure that there there's a copy of the contract that ends up? Because we do it, we do it ourselves for every two years or every we'll go two and then two off, two on and two off. Okay, we're in another on. We're in another on. Bob did it his first year here last year. Bob was our mower. This year, I think we're going to have everybody do their plow group instead of having one person sit on the tractor for a month. Okay. So again, if you would get a copy of the contract to Craig so that we can take a look at it. All right. Um, the parking lot behind the town hall, is there any plans for, for doing the road and or doing the work necessary to be able to park back there? Is there any plans for us to do it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, I've never seen plans for it. Well, I've never seen plans for it either, so. Uh, I have no idea what it entails, so. Okay. I can't say We're not going to plan it. We're just going to do it. Make the road for this <laughs> We can do it. No problem. Okay. Sure likes it, but that's it. No, but we really would like before the snow flies to be able to get a couple of cars back there if at all possible. Mm -hmm. no. Because it just gets us. So because you had an engineer, correct? I have no clue. No. Hey, well, it hasn't been engineered. The right of way is staked out. We'll have to get that from Sanderson again. Okay. It is basically just uh, 30 yards of gravel on the road. Yeah, even I could talk to Brad Reader when he goes to work sometime, Brad Sanderson, and get his. Does it you and I can talk about it. There are a couple of things that we have to take note of, and I've got the cable, um, the guy wire, this pole being moved as soon as Fairpoint gets in to move it, and so on and so forth. But, uh, but if I do something, it's totally what everybody else thinks is different, or vice versa. Now, David and I were talking about it pretty, uh, pretty heavily, and, and the whole point is that the highway crew would be able to do it. It's not really. I mean, it'd be feasible to have the highway crew do it. It doesn't have Instead to be, of putting it out the bid, and it contract. doesn't have to be the standard. But the thing is, right, we don't need to have it paved, but we want to make sure we're doing it to some somewhat so of. So it's going to be some drainage involved. There's going to be some other factors that we need sure, to take right. into consideration. Well, I don't know where everybody is on this before I get involved. No, no problem. Okay. Let's come on up with a grader and let's do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the next one we, I know we've talked about, and I just, again, these are bits and pieces from different people. I don't like being in this position. The Simpson Brook Road Grant, that is expired now. Okay, it expires in a month. So that's, okay. that's on my list too. The, that was a better back road grant. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, oh, I have to do this, do this. Well, when I had Todd, Mr. Renee's here from ANR, we looked at that because I wanted to get a permit for it. Mm -hmm. And I told you this a couple of meetings ago. Mm -hmm. If I don't get a, if I, he won't give me a permit for it, we can't do the grant. So he just, didn't give you a, a, a permit? No. Just because the better back road guy said, oh, that's a good idea. That doesn't mean the A and R is going to give you a uh, right. But you have spoken to A and R. Oh, yeah. Remember I told you that a couple years ago. That I don't remember. No, we were, we were we were talked about. Yeah, I said because Todd said that thing is going to self-correct for the rest of my life, and 
Like yeah, and he ain't gonna allow us to do it. I, I had that feeling even when I looked at it after realizing it. If I remember, if I remember me talking Yeah, about I think you talked to me about it when I was, yeah, but we didn't but talk about I, it. If I can't get a permit from them, just because yeah. a guy from Better Back Road says it's a good idea. It's, it's for not. I mean, the thing is, is like Todd, they don't like you to disturb now banks or brooks and stuff like that. And he is a stream alteration guy. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. That would be a major alteration. More, more power than we have. Okay. okay. The next one on the list is are the road signs. And where are we in that whole replacement now, cycle? Road signs. I was told last year half my gravel line was taken. No money for crack ceiling, no money for guardrails, and no money for road signs. Okay. Because my budget was adjusted to fix everything else that was askew. Ask Robert, my road commissioner, he was a witness to that. So I have two more years to get all the road signs going. Okay. I was going to originally do it in thirds. Each truck route, get that sign up, the other sign up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so I did nothing because I had no money. For this black, for this year? For this, this year. This, 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 what? this, this coming year there's 30,000 set of signs. What? Overall about 45. About 45 feet total. So in other words, there's two. Well, the thing so was, you 30 this year. We can do the thing was, Kurt, I had no idea what was cut out of the budget, so I'm trying to figure that one out. Yeah, so I, I had a lot of stuff cut. So, so you know, if you've got 30 coming into the budget, we're going to roll into on July 1, then sure. you could we'll essentially do two thirds. Or a half. It'd be interesting to see. You said 45 total. 45 overall. 45 overall. Well, there was 15 in this last year, and then there's 30 in this year. I yeah. said, what is the 15 still in there? That's the, it, by the town report it says it was there. So I don't know where they cut out. There's some monies in there that they cut out. Right, right? July 1st, that won't be there anymore. That won't be there anymore. Right. So we'll 30 in for next year. But so. that, 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 if that money is in there now, that should not go in the general budget. That should stay in the highway budget. If we want to go to the book of statutes, highway money stays in the highway budget. It goes back to the taxpayers where it goes. But if it's, it's not a reserve. But it should not go back to the general. There's a whole, there's a whole couple pages on this. My question was, was it been nice to have a good summary Actually, of where we were budget wise to know where we were? If we were, if we had twenty thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars in the budget, we could earmark it for freaking sign drive. If we still have it, that's great. But I don't know. Well. Well, you do have 30 coming up for this year. That should be about two thirds of what's needed. I will do as much as I can for $30,000. How's that sound? That's fine. And you said you have another two years? Yes. To, to get this complete? To be compliant, yes. All right. Next one on the list is the tree cutting in the right of way. Tree cutting is on the list also. Um, we got to get the ball rolling on that. I see I, was, uh, I just got a copy of this from Dale. And I was going to do it for 15 days and it came in uh, May, May 2nd. So I probably should call them back, see if it still stands, because I did get three prices, one from Russell Electronic, there's a ver verbal thing, nothing written down, and uh, one from Davey, and one from May. Yeah, I called a bunch of other people, but they never came to talk to I saw Davey's, and it'd be interesting to know if they were able to get a hold of Redfield on that. Um, I called Redfield, too. He knows about the trees. Were they willing to pitch in? That's basically their, their right. Is retiring. Like soon. Yeah, I know he's going down soon, so it'd be nice to have an answer from him. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, we have we have nothing to really compare um, price-wise from these three different companies because one's expired. You said one was not in writing, and then we just have a, a straight-out bid. I'm assuming from from Davies. Mm -hmm. Straight-out bid from Davies. You know, this one that's out of date, but I mean this one is a lot cheaper than that. They all know the trees. There's 28 trees and. I don't know, these are all on 35? Grass and Road, Athens Road. Okay, when are you going to do this in a town? I was told to get that done. Okay. I'm just curious before mine comes down and just takes somebody out. There's trees all over. I so that was, I'm just curious. So Davies was all on 28 trees? Mm -hmm. Davies Price? Because I saw Davies Price. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how would you like to move forward with that since we only have one, seems like one active bid? Are you well, let me call me out and see what the, if I'll stand by this place. Okay, then can you get back to us then? And Absolutely. And, did, and I didn't think Mayotte was covering traffic control. How much was that going to cost us? You see, I had it all set up with uh, Mayotte, and when they were cutting trees, 
they're cutting all the big trees. We were going to cut a lot of those little, because we need traffic control when we do. So we'd be in the works of cutting also the road. Their, their bid price was... We're not going to cut out traffic control. Because if we do, no, 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 I didn't want to cut out traffic control. I just didn't time. see the price in his for traffic control. They were, they were, they were, they were versus versus they were Navy adding, trees. They were. I looked at Navy oh, trees bid and it had traffic control in it. They were adding if they added down traffic control. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. I knew there was something about traffic control. I weren't sure what it was. Oh, everybody got to have traffic control. Yeah, you got to have traffic control. I know that. I was just trying to compare apples with apples. Okay. So, okay. Uh, and then the, the next one would be, it was, we were noticed when we were going through the payroll that we're not getting the backs of the timesheets with the usage. In other words, how the hours are being spent. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we can, can start doing again so that sure. we can charge the, the appropriate trucks or the appropriate vehicle for their use? Actually, is there a spreadsheet set up for that already? I thought there was because it, they were coming in for a while on the yes. back side. Right, right. Right. Well, we discussed time sheets yeah. uh, initially. Yeah. Craig said he didn't need anything on the, oh, back. on the back. On the back. Right. So we set up a file in the, in the town garage. Okay. So we are collecting all that information. You got that information. Right. 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 So together. you got that work. Okay. You're still collecting okay. it. You just got it. Okay. 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 Yeah, they used to compete with the time sheets. Since the time sheets changed, they've come through a period of time. Trust time. me, I know where the boundaries are. It doesn't really matter right now, but I mean, come winter, I mean, it does make a difference for both the overtime and all that. So I mean, if the board is looking at that kind of thing, and I know you were, so. So, so if, if Bob is going to put together a spreadsheet with all the usage, then in just in one one form, that would probably be, be, a lot easier. be easier to deal with than they going back through weeks and weeks and weeks of time sheets. Mm -hmm. And then the last question that I have for you, have we ordered our truck? Huh? Have we ordered our truck? Yeah, we ordered the truck. Okay. So. Because the fine exit, I believe, has been, has come in, is that the not The fine is for... Yeah, you guys told me that night to order the truck. I don't want to order the truck. Well, that, we actually didn't tell you to order the truck because we didn't have the financing yet. But now that the financing... No, 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 no. If we didn't have the financing, we were going to get a short loan term, a short term loan until the thinking. I That's don't all. remember discussing That's that. That's what it was discussed with me. Well, that may be the case, but I do not remember at the board meeting that ever being discussed. No. But it's a moot point because we got the financing. I, I wouldn't tell you that. Nah. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, that's where it is. So it is, when is it, when is it due to the delivery? Uh, end of July. End of July. The cabin chassis. That goes up for the body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you can do your report. Okay, another week with the road truck, and it's broke again, so I have to fix that tomorrow. Uh, no more contracts done. We've got to get paving bids up. Can I get paving bids up? What, uh, which road? Uh, Athens Road and um, the dirt part of uh, East Hill, or the paved part of East Hill. And I, if I do that, if you say yes to that, I have to, can I order culverts? I've been, I never got to go ahead to order culverts because I was shut down from ordering anything. Yeah. Huh. I know we have a cash flow problem this time of year. So. Well, it definitely until such time as, not for the end of this year, but we're going to be discussing, and I'm sure you've gotten wind of the fact that we're going to be discussing a requisition yeah. uh, piece yeah. tonight. Yeah, Robert's going to explain that. So, so that most likely that's the mechanism that you will use to, to decide how the the timing will be on those culverts. Okay, because I have a list of culverts and also on those paving jobs, we have to do some culvert work too. Okay. So. Good, because those are definitely the, the paving would have to be well, We don't key. have to pave it this summer. I mean, we can put the culverts in, put hot mix over it, let it beat in, and then pave it you know, next May. Usually, you always want to put your culverts in a year ahead. If you can. We stay in the no, they don't. But every color I've been making out is a speed bump. That's why. But anyways, that's, like, what's, uh, actually the color we put on right there. But, um, <laughs> what, what's the middle of the rubber truck? No, I that don't. That is I know last year. Hydraulic, hydraulic. Some hydraulic fine. When I got back, I pressure washed it and let it, I let it dry off. And I did something yeah. else because okay. I wasn't going to work out at all. So before we pave that section, are we going to take care of the water issue on that? Do you still? Rope? 
by the bridge? If we paved it, we'll change. Because we, when, we, when we fix that, I mean, where the catch basin is? The other side where it's washing out on the other side of the road. Yeah, I'm going to stone that. I mean, that's been an issue, an issue, an issue. Since. But we should try to take care of that water there. We started working out the other day. But also that road, the water issue, because that road has no ground to it. Right, and it needs to it's be, a trench. that's when we take care of the paving, we should right. take care of that. Exactly. That goes unsaid. Um, sign, I'm glad I signed that we have the money for that. Uh, Simpson Group Road, the back road grant. Uh, uh, fuel, the fuel tank is empty. Um, i got to get a, a two-inch black iron pipe cap for it, and we'll put it on a bit. And the electricity has been disconnected. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, one thing that, uh, well, well, this is out of order. Hmm. Huh. Just back myself into a real corner here. Um, yeah, okay. We'll just leave that alone. Because I'm in a corner. I can't really say what I want to say. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, there will be more information coming on the, the installation of the, the, the uh, pumps. The fuel pump? The fuel pump. Uh, after, after, later in the season. Evening. Uh, okay. 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 That's great. I had nothing to do with that, so. Right. I just want to let you know that that was also moving forward, but I haven't all, all of the proper pieces. And uh, other than that, I mean, we had that over, we, over have, we had almost an inch and a half of rain. The roads held up really great. Um, a couple little washes and the ditches lined up, but nothing tangible, you know, scrape them out. Um, we're just moving forward, you know, we're still trying to get all the roads scraped. Some of the short roads have been scraped once, you know, and because uh, the scrapes tell them two or three times already because of traffic. Over, so. um, I have a couple questions. Go ahead. Um, how are we working out on the Big COVID project? I know that was supposed to be gone out oh, of bid. That's right. Um, or the RFP? We have the RFP. We have, I got the RFP right when I was leaving. I read it on my computer. Uh, do you guys want to put that off for a bit soon? If we are going to do it this year, we've got to go out really quick. Oh, it's, or it's not going it, to, the financing isn't going to get on this year. The grant will cover most of it except for the, the final 20%. Um, I think Everett was going to head that up. Right. But it came in a mix of time. I've read the RFP through once. I don't know. Maybe you and I should talk about it, see if there are any other things you want to put into that. Mm -hmm. But it seems all right. It seems like a pretty standard form. That was for which? That's, That's for the grant called the Bottom Act. That's you know, the one we actually got, got the thing. structures grant yep. for. We have a structures grant for it. Um, we haven't got any grant for that. We got the engineering grant for my structure grant. Yeah, we have the engineering. Uh, and we won't be getting a normal thing for that right off. Well, the way I originally did it, even this, we're lucky we got the grant for the culvert. Because John and I, Alexander, originally set this up to do the engineering this year, apply next year, get the grants for next year. It's like a two year process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're actually ahead of the game when we grabbed it. And I talked to Mr. Hammond that, that there are some contractors that we've worked with who we'd like to just give a heads up to. They'll be thrown open one site visit, hopefully. Yep. They'll be there talking through, and hopefully we'll get some good bids back. So the, the, but that the, probably won't happen until probably after the beginning. The next question I have is then is Bridge 42. Obviously, I know we don't have budget and the money necessarily to do that out of our pocket. Right. So yeah. is what's... I know we're in the middle of dealing with Beck's done the first half and is ready to pretty much send it out the bid and Correct. we may need to shut that. We're not in. probably I, I talked talk to bid on that. I already talked to Matt about that. Um, okay. we're, we're not going to put out for bid this year. And he said, okay, so we'll just, then he's going to say, he said, this was a couple weeks ago, so I'm going to send a bill to the town. And I think you did receive the bill, right? Mm -hmm. now. Yeah, we did. We, it's actually in the warrants we paid. So that's for that first segment of his contract on right. that first half. And then when he does the bid package and all that and stuff like that, then we'll the second half. All right. I just want to make sure that communication happened because I know mm -hmm. with yeah. David we knew we were handling it. I, I got an email about the old beams and stuff like that. We don't want those old beams. You know, the webbing's right about their knife edge on top. On that bridge? Yeah, we don't want Because I thought the way he was designing it, we were just going to be putting a new top on top of it. That's it. It's a pre stressed concrete. It's not using those beams. Are, are okay, because I was looking at it. I actually had gotten a copy and looked at it, and it looked like it was a metal. So is there anything else like, that you would like to bring forward? Anything else? Anything else on your list that you would like to bring forward? Uh, gravel. 
Yeah. What are we going to do for gravel? Can I put it out for a bit? What for I next bit? Well, I have gravel money, but I should have money for last year. And it's going to roll on to this year. This I'm coming here in a few weeks. That's how we do it every other year. Well, do we have any idea how much money that is? Yep. Yeah, it's forty, fifty thousand. Is it not that much? Between the two of you guys together? Should be one. Yeah, we just used up. We just did the question. Grab a question. Voted 20. Oh. Voted for 14. It's running right now. Mm -hmm. It's 50. And proposed for 15 is 50. So. I honestly think we need to get a, an idea where we are sitting budget wise before we start. Well, I just want to give you guys a heads up. We have to do that. We've used up last year's. Next year, there's 50000 in the budget. The road. Did you use last, last year? We'll cut it in half and use twenty five. That was what. Uh, yeah, I think it was then. Uh, was it busy? Uh, Chase. 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 Yeah, it was 20, it was 25 for Chase this year. Okay. And then another thing, the money that came off the pit for the, for the timber, um, I thought we were going to put that money back into the pit to have the pit be cleaned up on our uh, stripped up on top and all that stuff taken care of on top. But we don't have to quit for that. Uh, I, mean, I thought that's where the money was going to go, keep the pit going on its own. Do we did how much money was, was taken in? I have the no idea. 30, some, 38, something like that. And that money was supposed to go back in. Thousand or hundred? Thousand. And I'm going to take all that money because that's not best for. That's what we discussed before we even allot it off. Hmm. Okay. And that would, it was supposed to. move that way, The motion didn't move that way. Some of it was for me, some of it was for me. You get some. So it was supposed to be 37 to, to, to do... It's not going to take 37 dollars. But, but technically it was to do what? To get to open the pit up more to be used for gravel. Okay, to open the pit. Yeah, to strip the topsoil, to stump it. Okay. To get rid of yeah, this is a lot of work before we can do the next... Probably take any more out of it. We're probably going to have to bench it pretty soon, aren't we? Well, that's, that's why we started up right now. Okay, well, I'm not really in the mood right now to try to consider that when I don't have any financial information in front of me to know where we are. Well, I don't either. So, so we, I mean, we need to do what about it? No, we're going to have to figure out where we are before we can take too many steps forward. It's not going to use that whole amount with that. That's how it's supposed to go. Okay. And that's all I have to say. That's all you have to say. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in then. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Thanks. Good night. Good night. So I would entertain a motion to uh, move the discussion with the Board of Health discussion yes. uh, forward in the meeting yeah. so that we can let Holly and et al. go home at a reasonable hour. Yes. So is there a second to moving the... Uh, she hasn't been home yet. I'll talk about it. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So now... Now we got to get the appropriate. We have new uh, laws. Six thirty-four. I'll call six thirty. I actually read them. Yeah, I did too. I I just had to find. And it's them. the declaimer. It's the it's the new section that we got to use. Ah, uh, okay. I know I gave Craig a copy of them. We just have to find them. I got them right here. Well, wait a minute. I've got my copy here somewhere. I know you have to take that one. God. Just a read from if you want. There you go. It's the it's an actual. Thank you. Yeah. There is a disclaimer in here. Just for the. Okay, so there was one here with Holly's name on it. Yeah. Please make a motion. Okay, well, I mean, I'm going to, I will entertain a motion to move to find that a premature general public discussion of the deputy health officer's inspection would clearly cause the tenant and the municipality to suffer a substantial disadvantage because the Board of Health risks, because the Board of Health risks disclosing its legal strategy if it discusses the response to the inspection report in public. It's required by law now. Is there a second? I, I, or so, I would entertain a motion, I'll, too. I'll, I'll entertain that motion. So moved. 
To, to enter executive session? No. No, you can't? No. no. You're just moving that You're just moving what substantial... she just said. Oh, the motion. Yeah, that's right. we got to go into the meeting. We would suffer into... a substantial disadvantage. Can you second that? I'll second All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Who would you like in the meeting? I'm not there yet. I'm not done yet. Um, okay, so, so there was an aye. You got an aye. So yeah, the motion aye. passes. Now, I will entertain a motion to move that the Board of Health enter executive session to discuss the De Deputy Health Officer's inspection and possible actions under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1E of the Vermont Statutes. Somebody make the motion? I'll make the motion. Somebody second it? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstention. Okay, so the motion passes. We will enter executive session with Ms. Hockerotz and Craig, because I believe you accompanied her, did you not? I did. Okay. So I'm guessing this will probably take about 10 minutes. <laughs> Officer will uh, la la la. How do I phrase this? It doesn't have to be a motion. That's just. And I'm not. I'm not making a motion. Okay. We'll 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 pursue the avenues that she discussed with the board. Okay. Alrighty. So let's go back up to the top. Uh, law enforcement isn't here, so I don't think there's anything new to report. I'm I have talked to Keith and. He and I will be getting together to find out how this whole thing is going to manifest sometime in the first week, second week of July. Okay. The contract signed. And when that, when the name of the officer does become available, uh, we need to make sure that the uh, deputy health officer oh, yeah. no, has, access, everybody can. has access to that number or to that name. A uh, town clerk's report. We did, in fact, have a, a cash report. So I want to miss a mess of papers. Are there yeah. any questions on that? No. It will be later. No, that's what I figured. Okay. The treasurer's report. First, before we ask for a report, Joe, um, one of the things that has brought to my attention is evidently we have to equalize the pay for the highway department before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, I guess there was there's some back and forth and up and down and on the pay, and I'm a. Assuming that that's going to go to the, the treasurer for the authorization on, or not? Are we talking about payroll issues? We're talking about payroll issues. The okay, not just the not just the uh, uh, vacation time straight now. Right, the, the actual the actual issues. cash. Yeah, we'll get, try to get that straightened out by the end of the year. Okay, so then you want to go ahead and do your do your report? Yeah. In the second account, we have one million. $38,908.51. Not anymore. One zero. Yeah. Three. Have you taken out? Can we do that? We do that again, Joe? I missed the zero. One million, thirty-eight thousand. Uh, nine hundred and eight. Nine. Five one. Five one. Okay. And, yeah, you're taking out seven hundred and eighty thousand, one hundred one point eighty. That's going to be over eight. So you're, you're going to have after the warrants about two hundred thousand. But so. some came in today and turned it over to Becky about fifty eight hundred. Okay. And there is there is uh, there is more coming in. It, it will be uh, five digit um, from a couple of different places. Did we get the money moved for? From we did. From our day. Yeah. yeah, our day. Oh, we went to God. Burlington called me today, and the other RDAG is up for rollover or whatever, is $43,888.25. 40, so is that the, the principal? That's in a CD. That's the principal. That's in a CD at People's Bank, and that's due end of the month or something. No, it come due today. We've got 10 days. To, I'm supposed to call her tomorrow and tell her what went on tonight. There's still approximately, I don't know because I didn't look at the receipt, I haven't actually done the journal entry yet. There's still approximately 30,000 plus in the money market account 
you were going to bring a heating system, other mm -hmm. things for town hall. Um, that is available to us, and I would recommend to the board that we roll that CD over. What that type, is the principle. What type of, of terms are you usually roll it over? How many years? One year. What? Well, yeah. You're doing one year. The time. town do not do long term deals. Not if you think you might, might need it. <laughs> okay, so do you want a motion then to, to direct it to what to do with the CD? Yeah. This is the principal part of that. Yeah, this is the principal part, right. which we, and we used to make, yeah, at five or six percent, we used to make some interest on it, but not at so, two percent. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, allow the treasurer to reinvest the CD that is maturing uh, back into which bank? Peoples? Peoples. Peoples. Peoples Bank for a term of one year. Do we have an interest rate? Do we know what it would be? No, they won't tell you that. Until, until you do it? Until uh, the 10 days are up. Okay. At, at, at some specified interest rate? Yeah. Uh, second? Or make you make motion? Yeah. I make motion. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor of rolling over the CD signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? You're not voting, Dale? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, because no, we can't pass it on one. I was, I was busy thinking of something here. I was looking at my note. Okay, so Sorry. is that a positive? Uh, I, I, oh, okay. I approve. The, the motion passes. I made the motion. Well, you yeah. didn't vote. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Okay. Uh, is there anything else, Joe, that you want to do? Uh, let's see. I don't think I've got anything else. There's uh, about 150,000 delinquent on all four quarters. It's not too bad. Have we ever explored as a town, and oh, I'm going to get shot for this one, but have we ever explored looking at um, negotiating with the schools on the outstanding education money that is not collected or is in delinquency? Not that I'm aware of. My last discussion with the school financial people was that that is an option for the towns to deduct that from the amount of outstanding on those bills. I mean, it's not as high as it has been in years past, but the majority of that 150000 when you when you think about it, is school money. Yeah, about so, 83%, I think. So I, it's something if we happen to get into a year where we have a fair amount of balance due on delinquent taxes, we might want to actually consider pursuing the legal avenues to be able to deduct those unpaid taxes from the payments to the school. It has been brought up in conversation, but it's never gotten legs and gone anywhere. Well, I'm surprised that the state allowed there to be that. Well, it has to be because the town... The we, town front, we front the money. We, yeah, we're basically fronting the money, I know. But the town pays the schools upon the completion of 20 days after the completion of a collection of taxes. If you haven't collected the taxes, you don't. You should technically not have to pay them. And the issue has been raised as to whether we could withhold that, allow the schools to put pressure on delinquent taxpayers who don't pay the educational portion, at least, since that's a liability that's due now. I was surprised. I, I just was wondering if that was in the language of that 68. And no, but according to... There is a mechanism in there whereby, as you said... Bill, Bill Talbot, yeah. last time I spoke to Bill Talbot, it, it is it's an option. Well, I have one more question. So, I learned something. Uh, what do you think we should get for a line of credit this for this coming year, start in July? I have to say that after finding out what the what the schools got as a line of credit, I say go for it. go for broke. Uh, they be, I believe they pulled down a forty four hundred thousand dollar credit line on a budget of roughly one point three, which is a third. Huh? But they're getting interest on the money they don't use. I know they are. Well, know. that's not supposed to be made public or on camera because you have to put somebody in a hot seat if you say that out loud. But, yes. Sorry, Josh. We might, we, we might want to consider asking for more than the, what was it, 220, 235 that we had this year? Mm -hmm. We might want to look at, at the total budget and see if we couldn't match that for roughly. Because well, usually there's a guideline that they always set for like FEMA things. I remember when we had Irene hit that the town should free up to have a line of credit in case of a disaster. It, there was a percentage number. I didn't go to that class and it'd be interesting to know. 
I was wondering if it was 40 or 50 percent. Mm, Does that sound no, more? Cash flow. Like, I don't know how they loan yeah. on that. No, we don't. We don't have that. Cash oh, flow. it's based. It's based on your. It's based on your tax base along with your tax taxable and taxable. We should have a better idea where we are financially next week. After I get through today, that's going to be the focus. To be the general fund and buttoning up the year, trying to come up with some uh, hard numbers for you guys. You'll hear about them well before next week. Um, and there still is an outstanding hundred and. 20 plus uh, from FEMA, which is in the in the works for the East Hill project. Have, That's a reimbursement. Have we actually received yet? No, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, never mind. Okay. I'll ask the question in a minute. Yeah, okay. Okay, is there anything else, John? All right. Then we need to deal with the select board member resignation. And I received this actually yesterday. And it says, due to the increased workload at my employer, I feel like I can no longer get the time or energy needed to be a member of the Townsend Select Board. I hereby resign my position on the Town Select Board effective June 8, 2014. I will continue to fulfill the role of Emergency Management Director. Sincerely, Margaret David Diesendorf. I will entertain a motion to approve his resignation. I'll make the motion with regret to accept David's resignation. I'll second that. Is there any discussion? I would like to just mention a couple of things. I would like to point out before we accept this, if we do, that David served as this board's chair, as its vice chair, as its clerk, as a highway co-commissioner, as the emergency management director and as chair of the board of, board of abatement during his tenure, his four-year tenure on this board. I would also like to note that he managed the state and federal grant receipts, prepared all the FEMA documentation for Tropical Storm Irene recovery reimbursements, oversaw all road maintenance contracts, town hall renovations, town infrastructure improvements, and stream mitigation endeavors. He worked tires, tirelessly and devoted thousands of, of hours of his time to the betterment of this community with little recognition and no acknowledgement really or thanks. And I would just like to take this time to thank him for all that he did during his four year tenure on this board. That being said, all those in favor of accepting David's resignation with regret signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, abstentions, the motion passes. Okay, now back to my question. I don't remember what the question was. How do we want to proceed? No, but, but there was no, no. There was there was a, there was a question <clears throat> that we were just talking about. Oh well, let's come back to me. Uh, at this point in time. Uh, I would entertain a motion to. Oh, I gotta find the right paper again. My I got it. You got, I got mine. I got it. I got it. I would entertain a motion. It's not here. There it is. To to move into executive session session to discuss the appointment of a public official under Vermont statute section one or section three thirteen a three. I'll entertain that motion. I think a motion. So, so, yeah. You just, so moved. Just, just so moved and said it. So moved. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. So, I guess this is probably going to take about five minutes. Yeah. I hope. Five. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming out at 7.36. Coming out of executive session. Select board uh, will make a. We're going to make a motion coming out of executive session. Who? What? You're I'm making a motion yeah, coming out of the select board. Uh, a motion to appoint Carol Mellis to the select board to fulfill David Diesendorf's term till March. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Is there any discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor of appointing Carol Mellis to. Fill the remainder of the David Diesendorf's turn until March. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Oh, my eyes.
forgive me. I can't see where they are. How's your My tooth's fine. My eyes are going to drive me nuts. Okay, so that takes that off. Now, there was another shelf. I don't remember what that piece was that I needed to ask, but I will remember. Um, correspondence. Uh, members of the public? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got so much written on my sheet, I didn't even see that. Number seven. Do you have anything to say, Nothing. How many cars went by? Nothing anybody wants to hear. Uh, nothing anybody wants to hear. <laughs> nope. Okay. I've got your phone number, so you'll know back sometime sir. Okay. No, so you have our email. Nope. It doesn't carry my volume. <laughs> okay, correspondence. Um, there, you have in your packets, there was a letter from Thomas Chase requesting um, a meeting with the select board. He was uh, unable to attend tonight. I think it's in the packet, is it not? I don't, yeah, I have. He hands it. No, no, I don't. from Thomas Chase. There you go. That's all I got. No, Dale doesn't have a copy of it. Oh, okay. No, I had the key hat in my minute. He's, obviously, he's, he's, he's got it all here. He doesn't have it. <laughs> but anyway, he will be <coughs> most likely attending the next board meeting, if at all possible, to discuss. Can you? I'm sorry. Yeah, sit down. You probably should. Yeah. He's, he would like to s discuss the veterans exemption and why he is paying a veteran veterans exemption let alone veterans exemption tax. So next meeting, he should be here. Hmm? Yeah, the, you, you really need to read the letter to understand. Uh, and then the other piece of correspondence we had was from Brad Boucher. Uh It was concerning a piece of property that the town owns up on Higgins Lane. And it was an offer. But we cannot discuss that tonight because I have to recuse myself from that discussion. And we're going to need three, three, right, we need three people on the board who can vote for a majority. So that will have to be postponed. And I would recommend that you research it a little better. Yeah. Think about it, but acknowledging that letter has arrived. There's also another one I didn't put down in correspondence, but it's just a thank you note from Sevka. We made a contribution of 1500 bucks on behalf of Southeastern uh, Vermont Community Action. I'd like to thank the residents of the town of Townsend for their commitment to help their neighbors in need. This contribution will help Sevka continue to pursue its mission of reducing the causes of and moving toward the elimination of poverty in our county. Okay. okay. So that was all the correspondence? Right. Moving on to old business, uh, the purchase order requisition policy revision that we have been talking about now for the last few meetings. You all received a revised uh, copy that uh, we found one correction to so, so far. Uh, has everybody had a chance to take a look at it or to read? Yeah, I just read it today. Okay. The one, the one correction that needs to happen is on the second page, number eight, which is talking about the uh, <coughs> of bids and RFPs. Under section five, special purchases. Right. It says um, a warrant public meeting by the legislative body at a time not less than ten days after the deadline. It should be not more than ten days after. So in other words, it would be within that ten days. So just that that one correction. Do you have a copy of this, Ryan? I have a copy. Do you have a copy? Oh. Is there any discussion about the, uh, the revisions that were made? I see that the uh, fire department and the library and the cemetery commission were all exempted. What was that? Uh, that they all have their own governing boards. The library has the, their trustees, the fire department has its own uh, financial in-house. Well, Joe could explain it better, but they handle their own finances in-house. They have their own charter, okay. basically. And they, who's the other one? The library, the fire department? Library, 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 library. Cemetery Commission. And again, they're, they're autonomous from that standpoint. Any other discussion? Although, my typing skills being as bad as they yeah. are, 
and I'll just point out that it is copied correctly <laughs> from the original. It does say it no was, less than. Yeah. Right, it does say not less than. Okay. And I didn't even think when I copied it because I had to retype that. <clears throat> it basically incorporates this one, which was um, Are there any, accepted. Any, <laughs> any, any questions? I mean, the way this is, is set net right now, the Craig will be the one that's responsible for assigning the purchase order numbers, etc., to the different uh, items. The only thing in here that kind of bothered, it didn't bother me, was it was, it was actually under the, a good example like tonight. Kurt's, Kurt's looking f to do some projects and, and needs basically for the select board, requires select board approval prior initial of the formal bid process. We don't have really, I mean, he puts in a requisite. How we don't have any word in here about how the RFPs should be. We have a standard Townsend uh, contract form. We have a standard Townsend request for proposals okay. form, which have been worked on over the last couple of years. So okay, it, I just I just didn't see that. any. I was wondering if that should be required, select like prior approval initially from the bid process. Shall you know? It, 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 I was wondering if we needed some wording to refrain that it needs to come in on a. PR needs to come in proposal. Well, I, think, I think he could have I'll that the, in a proposal form. He could have that in there and we could spell it out, but basically I think you're going to grant approval to go ahead with the process based upon uh, standard protocols which the town has already um, basically adopted. Yeah. In I just time. wanted to make so that if you are so that if you do say Kurt, go get some bids on gravel crushing, you're going to do that based on the forms that are required for those RFPs and Kurt will be following presumably those protocols and those procedures in order to keep this all very uniform. Well, I just didn't see anywhere where those, we actually refrained. We can make those. that, we can reflect that in here. I mean, it's I just, I mean, I just wanted to make, you know, I wanted to, to not to say, well, it doesn't say I have to put a, something, you know, any department can come in and say, well, I mean, it just says the way the request. contract, the way the contract forms um, were set up on the heels of Tropical Storm Marine and the request for proposals is they were set up heavy based on state and federal rules. And as Bob is, I'm sure, aware, they get watered down depending on what we're looking for. I mean, a lot of these jobs are very, very small. We don't need 40 pages in a contract. Right. You basically pick your way through it. Right, but, but I, I just wanted but to I think on, But I think on purchases greater than greater than this amount, that the board will provide instruction. And if you're gonna have Kurt make the phone call and talk to the people that he's dealt with in the, that it's a fairly simple thing to provide him with the forms to respond to you with so that you can make a decision on No, I, go ahead. I know I've seen those, those, the RFP and the contract forms. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some blank ones out for I, I was gonna say it would be helpful if, yep. if you could see the, if, although the RFPs. They are thick, I mean, it just, there, you know. There are other purchases that are over $1,000. Right. You're not gonna get an RFP. Right, yet. exactly. No. Of course, yeah. you're, you're right. But, you know, I just, like, to me, to make it fair for me to, re you know, it's going to come to the board for review, mm -hmm. it'd be easier to have him write up an RFP on paving project, COVID project. Right. You know, those purchases there. And, for example, the engineer who did the um, Grafton culvert um, project came up with his own, and we're just vetting that. Kurt and I will have to sit and look at it. I haven't had a chance to look at it too much yet. Um, just to make sure that it's basically an agreement. It is standard. Um, a -A so, so like when we send something out to engineering, and they're going to take care of their, the the bidding process. We just want to make sure that it dovetails with ours, and that all the bases say, are hey, this is well, this is our purchasing policy, and that when we send something out to right. buy something, it needs to follow that. But I think Bob is correct that most of the purchases that happen on a regular basis, and most of many of them, I won't say most, but many of them are over a thousand dollars, are pretty much standard through the years. So you're going to buy sand. You're going to buy sand. And, yeah, and, well, even things like uh, tire replacement. You're going to call three different vendors, right. but you're not going to send out a bid. No, of course right. exactly. and, and those are going to be three preferred vendors or sole source vendors, if you will. And you're just going to check with the usual sources. And, you know, we'll see how, how far this gets home. I don't think it's going to be onerous of any by any means. I just was trying to make sure the complicated stuff is it's actually an easier way to track easier purchases. Spelled out for the board. It'll be an easier way to track purchases. There may be in, in initially within the first couple of months some better control on the on the spending, but mostly it's going to relieve um, the finance office of an awful lot of work in looking up account numbers and figuring out who did what when and how, and basically put some overarching uh, 
I mean, you could even do it uh, with inc incidental parts. So if, say you inch, issue a uh, purchase order for Napa mm -hmm. or a purchase order for each vehicle, mm -hmm. and it's a blanket purchase yeah. order. When we call an order filters or whatever, mm -hmm. put this on purchase number XYZ, when that invoice comes in, You'll know that purchase order is still too bad. And the highway, the highway department makes the most frequent expenditures, yes. and through the years, you've basically vetted most of the vendors. There will be blanket purchase orders assigned. You and I will talk about it, Kurt and I will talk about it. And we can break that down so that each vehicle has a Franklin Auto blanket order number. Uh -huh. um, if it's an exceptional kind of thing, then we may want to do some checking around. But that by and large, there shouldn't be any hindrance in your being able to do day to day business. Okay. Yeah, I just I want to make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, so do I. <laughs> I don't we, in the middle. Just, but I also agree. I think things like cutting edges, uh, yeah. chains, well, so on and so forth. You know roughly when you need to buy them, and you could create a purchase order now with a date on it, and you'll know that's in the hopper for a future right. expenditure. But after a couple of years, you want to let people know that you're also looking around because there's, yes. I mean, it, the competition is well, good for everybody. You're requiring, on every purchase of those types, you're requiring three different vendor prices. But once you have your vendor price, then that's probably good for the year. I mean, on a repeat kind of basis. But yeah, we'll work out those details. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, um, it's something that's going to have to work very closely with the highway department because those, those expenditures are, as I said, the most frequent and the largest. But because you have the most vendors in the system, um, we're going to have to go down and, and look at them all and see what the buying habits and the buying patterns are. But I don't, I don't think it's going to slow anything down. And cost and I think it's going to improve. I think one of the things that that I'm most interested in seeing come out of all this is this group of bills was was a prime example of how this policy is going to help streamline. Um, I came in to sign on Saturday, mm -hmm. and there were five or six different uh, purchases that could not be identified to truck or or kind or department or, or whatnot. And having this in place where it's, it's already detailed where this where this piece is going, what line it's going to be on will help everybody from Craig and the finance office to, to us sitting here at the table to know that it went it went to T9 or it went to I don't know where, but well, and the fact that elected officials or employees are actually looking at their account numbers and looking at their budgets and seeing on a regular basis budget reports, because if we can get this accurate enough and streamlined enough, then those budget reports can come through literally weekly. Um, but so that there's some familiarity with how these things get us on. I mean, I make them up, and sometimes I shrug my shoulders because it doesn't matter whether it goes into all equipment fund or whether it gets a $3 bill, doesn't matter. You know, whether it's for the mower or whether it's all equipment. And sometimes I can't get all of somebody to give me an answer, and so we just put it out there. But it will allow for a little more accurate tracking of things that the board ultimately wants to um, and watching those keep a tally of. And watching your budget lines go up and down. Some are way over, some are way under. And it'll help, it'll help come budget season to know. Well, as, as this progresses, we'll have to. Keep it'll give you more data. <laughs> and, and the thing is, you're going to find the glitches, and then that's when you adapt. You change and you adjust. Yep. Right. So at this point in time, have you all, are you comfortable with this? Are there some revisions or changes you would like to well, see? No, but as long as it's open to revision in the future. Oh, it's, it could certainly be. I, I, I don't think it's. Needed. This is, not, this is a good starting point. Right. Yeah, and then I would like to have it in place come July 1 so that we begin, begin the process of explaining it to the different departments that are going to have to be using it, you know, what the change is going to be. So if you're comfortable with what's here with that one change, that less to more on the second page. And that was original to the It was original in the document. <laughs> that's what I thought, and I was like, like no, it's, it's in that the doesn't read right. It's in the original purchase. So if, if, we're, if purchase we're comfortable with that, I would entertain a motion to adopt the revised um, uh, purchase order, or Goods, Goods and purchase, purchase Goods, policy. Goods and Services Purchase Policy. I make that motion. Second. First, I'll second. Second. I thought we had to do it to get school. Is there, there is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the Town of Townsend Goods and Services Purchase Policy as revised. 
signify the same name? Gail? Yes, aye, aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Where would you like to sign a copy? As corrected. Uh, you can as you can, you can sign that third sheet if you want and hold on to it until I correct the second sheet, which I can't do on this computer with a PDF. Because I can't convert it back to Word. And I will change uh, number eight to not from so not less to eight, not more than ten days. Okay, so this is uh, in July is getting right now. Six. And I will post it. Would you, would you, do you want to attach it to something? You just want that last page? Oh, okay. okay. There are enough copies. No, there's a lot of copies here. Really? What's on the back of that? More notes. More notes. Okay, Ancient Roads, is there anything? I know we've got a hearing. I wanted to verify to make sure July 21st. Mm -hmm. That's, so we were going to uh, do Our meeting, it'll be, yeah, I think it's 5.30, July 21st. Yes. Before the select board meeting? Right. Yes, and it will be for the um, class four roads, which are identified already identified. Yeah, they were they were just cleaning up some of that list and yeah. and, 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 and and moving on. And, yeah. and how many more do we have after these five? There are five. I think there's like five more that need site visits, and then there's like three more that need to actually go and do some more research on, in which I'm trying to figure out when I can come in to do that. And that was a yeah, July. July 21st at 5.30, and I'll get a down the list term. But my, my goal is is to get the ones that we've already surely got all researched and that we know that are pretty much, we just need to do the first, you know, the site visits and just get that pounded out and then get everything all pretty much taken care of. And then there's the three that I know that we're going to have a difficult time researching I mean some people have already done researching there's just need to do a double check because they're they're, they're not finding any records so from what I'm getting follow up on well Carol was involved in that in the initial was she not so she might be she might be a already. good resource yes all right and the compactor came off the list even though Kurt did mention that it is currently broken I again one. I draw ones um we, yeah, I mean, we need to have a discussion on how we want to deal with it. That's the thing. Um, the, we're, the, the, the idea of what I've been doing with the garbage is, it's kind of been still out there a lot, how we're going to deal with it. But, you know, people have been yelling at, are we going to get a new compact or are we not going to get a new compact? The thing is, is, we need to decide, are we going to go out and try to buy a brand new one, or could we just think about want to go down that used line again? And I felt that at town meeting, everyone was saying, we just go buy a new one. Well, but most people aren't aware of the changes in the law, either. No, they're not. And I'm wondering, I was, I talked to Irvin the other night, we had, him and I had another one, was always meeting, and I, uh, um, we're going to try to nail down here, July, we're trying to get the end of the year stuff taken care of and uh, down there and got a better idea of what's going on down there and I'm going to be going in and talk to a couple um, I'm actually going to have a meeting with um, Bob down at Wyndham Solid Ways so I'm going to try to go in and see him um, and discuss some options and, and see where we could maybe see how things go we may end up needing to if the thing is, is they're looking at pulling these units. They're looking at you pulling the 24-7 boxes. But they'd still make them available for us if we had put them in an enclosed transfer station. Or I just try to feel out what's going on. They don't know how they're going to do it. And I know in the planning committee meeting this next, at the end of this month, next week, they're actually, they're forming um, to inform us on 
the, the, the group has figured out how to help towns deal with 148. So there should be some information coming on how to deal with 148 and how to implement it in areas. Technically, we are closer to being compliant than a lot of towns are. And um, we already do a fee, um, dumping, tipping fee, you know, pays for it somewhat, which may need to be adjusted because may not collect it enough to get that covered. And we actually have recycling. I mean, the only thing is we have to figure out how to deal with the compost, the increase there and stuff, which I don't think we have the room at the town garage to do it. So, so I mean, we're, we're the thing is, is I guess I got to get my T's and my I's crossed and, and actually set up to have a, we'll have a discussion and we might end up needing to have a special town meeting. I just like to have my options available to present to you guys and it's a lot of research and on some of these pop potential options. I mean, there's <coughs> us staying out into the trash business, getting out of the trash business, but staying into the trash business, it's just opened it up to where there's more options to us and how we want to do it. And, and, and some of those options may not be available to us because we may not have a vendor that would willing to supply that option. So. Um, I've heard through multiple sources that there are grants available for the implementation. Have we looked at any of those? I was not informed of any grants that were able to implement it. Really? Yeah. It's the first I've heard of it. Okay. You might need to pass that information along to me. Okay. I'll have to get some specifics on that. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else on the compactor? Or How bad is the damage now, Bob? I don't know, pull it apart in the morning and see what's... Oh, it's a compactor part or is it truck part? It's compactor, hydraulic part. Do we have to stomp on it? Is that what you're talking well, about? Well, I, I didn't, he didn't even frame what part it was. It was the drive, or it was the whole thing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, there's quite a bit of hydraulics inside that. Yeah, and a lot of them haven't been maintained in a while, or at least not. You know, I didn't know if it was a transmission or a clutch or a brake or no. compactor arm. Okay. okay. Uh, the town hall heating system. Uh, as you know, we're, we semi got it installed. There are still pieces or something that isn't finished. Although it's always plenty hot in here as far as I'm concerned. I'm not sure what we need to finish, but somebody who, it's, who's it's not like working. global warming, global cooling. I see, what, okay. What <laughs> that was almost two boards ago that they were dealing with this thing. No, uh, it's more than that. So we're, it'd be nice to know where we're, what, I know it was a temporary, what would need to be done to finish it? It's not really temporary, it is a, it is a gas boiler that we have downstairs, it works extremely well. Right now it's uh, running hot water through a radiator coupled to a 1970s oil furnace plenum, which we're using for its fan and blowing hot air into the ductwork. It's a relatively efficient system, but it's kind of jury rigged. Um, the argument <clears throat> at the time the heating system was put in, this new boiler, because the oil burners are getting very old and aren't very efficient. One of them gave out. Um, the argument at that point from one member of the board was, um, and a couple other people actually, that either radiant heat, hot water forced radiant heat or baseboard heating system uh, would be a better way to go in terms of efficiency and in terms of uniform um, heating of the building. Right now we have some real issues with some rooms being way too hot back here. Um, too cold, town clerk's office, although the door opens 28 times an hour. Um, Lister's office doesn't transfer uh, air very well, whatever the time for that is. That gets extremely hot, uh, both in summer and winter. In any event, um, either to put in um, zoning dampers and set up a zoning system for forced hot air if we're going to continue to use that or to consider something else. So basically a brand new boiler, it's sitting on a platform, concrete platform. It's gotten very dusty and very dirty from downstairs. It needs to be in a little mechanical room that'll keep it a little bit clean. That having been said, there is some more work to do, but there are some options to explore as to how we should this year, next year, two years down the road, finish off this system. Okay, so it's nothing that needs to be dealt with immediately this summer. It isn't, but it's opportune perhaps this summer to get some first, second, third priority options maybe laid out. 
there was discussion about bearing a propane tank outside, there was talk about a heat exchanger, there were a number of things that it'd be nice to <clears throat> get some paperwork down, some engineering plans down at relatively little cost, but it would be good to sort of begin to hone in on how you're going to finish this off so that when you go into the fall, whether any work has been done or not, you'll know how to budget for next year. It'd be nice to know if we're going to be feasible to go down the keeping hot air or going down the other way. We have another world Because, cost, you know, 19, the cost benefits and the physicists. The other world furnace, which is also 1970s, has had its issues. It keeps getting repaired year after year. It's not that expensive, but it does heat the upstairs. Right, that's the big one. Well, we do have some issues with the oil tanks downstairs, which are full of the fire department. What the site at home, but I guess you don't need that now. Um, but those oil tanks really do need to be uh, reset, if not replaced, if we're going to continue to burn oil for upstairs and propane gas for the rest of the building. We have kind of a mishmash of systems, and it was a very expensive boiler. And, 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 it's nice and it was basically, that was a ba rush band-aid fix. Well, it was, and there was, we were going to bury a 3,000-gallon tank out here on the side of the building. It's not a big deal. They hold the back hole, lay some sand in, get the company in to set the tank, but it all has to be coordinated and it just doesn't, it's like digging up the tanks of the fire department, you know, it just doesn't happen. It's not hard, but somebody has to make the decision to get the scheduling done and three weeks later it gets done. Has, kind there, of has there been a, uh, an energy or heating design? Years ago, salt? yeah, yeah, we, we, we've years. had, yeah, and I, I should get your copy of um, the uh, town hall renovations plans for this building, although they were terribly expensive they, and ambitious. Um, many of them made a lot of sense. We did get a grant. We did spend some money. We also got a grant to insulate the building. The building is very well insulated now. The windows are bad, but the building isn't. Uh, the building's in really good shape. Um, but, but I believe, like, I, I don't know if, it, if Web does it or not, but I know I, I've seen companies that they have someone on staff will come out and look at and do a heat loss state, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Look at your system yeah. and, and make recommendations and give options. Well, the only reason I kind of talked to Kathy a while back on, on this as one item is that it is summertime. And most of those companies that do that kind of thing are looking for work during the summer. This is a good time to do that because once fall hits, everybody's cleaning furnaces and doing real work, repair and replacement. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing, but the town hall does need some work. Whether it's a roof inspection, whether it's fixing some leaks here and there, whether it's that front porch, whether it's the bathroom remodel, the kitchen remodel, the parking lot, out there, whatever. New there is a the long office. Office. There's a long laundry list. And coming up with that list, setting the priorities is based on getting sound counsel from people who know, the contractors, the engineers, in order for you to come up with a priority list of what needs doing first and how much it's going to be and whether you have the will to do it. But at least having that information at hand um, is something that you can work from. Knowing that there's 20 things to do and not knowing when you're going to get to it just puts it off till next week and then the week after that and before you know it, it doesn't get done four years later. So I'm just, I'm just anxious to begin that system of addressing some of the concerns with infrastructure in this town. So it's a pleasure. Oh, I'm... Not you. Just fine. Pleasure is, uh, I think we discussed it. And, and, and it'd be... I mean, I think on the priority list is, is your concern is just like my concern. I didn't know if there was something that we needed to immediately do that wasn't, you know, on the heating system. I mean, we got to think about the heating. But. We would like to have somebody come out here and take a look at it. Or two or three somebody's come out here and take a look at it. Well, I mean, have we... Did we have a recommendation from the previous con contractor? No, the contractor simply did the boiler He just He just did the install, he didn't do any right. And given what the budget was, it was a quick fix to basically fit a pretty nice, but it was a custom made radiator that fit in the plan. I know, I do know, <coughs> with talking with Warren about the, when they did do that, he did the wiring to that, you know, like if we wanted to keep the forest hot air system, that we should really seriously look into the heat dampers and maybe had them replace and some of them that are faulty and not worked on. And if you're going to work do that, there's some duct work that could be replaced. I mean, one thing does lead to another, but it's not. But, but if they're going to do that, then 
10 months later decide to put baseboard hot water in. Well, in right, that's where you need to make the capital decision, but if once you make that, then you can begin to pick it up <coughs> one room at a time or whatever. There are uh, manifolds down there for, I think, eight different zones for this building off that boiler off the that aren't being used, but I mean, they're there. They were put in place. Um, and if you continued with a, with a hot air system, and that was the most second, and that was recommended by the architect that actually did the study of this building most uh, most seriously. Um, then I think you would want to look at the quality of the ductwork and, and whether it's efficient, but also put in some zoning dampers, automatic dampers, so that you can regulate heat or have different thermostats in your yeah. I mean, you can have eight zones on that boiler, but is that boiler capable of handling it the square footage? It should. I imagine it did. I mean, I didn't think it would be undersized anyways, but, you know, it's just... But if you're going to go with the hot air, it was suggested that we put another propane boiler down there because this isn't big enough to do both the upstairs and the downstairs unless you go with hot water. It is a hot water system. And that's anyway, so it's to, just to keep it in the just to not that's forget about food it. for thought. <clears throat> yeah. All right, new business. Bookkeeper resignation. Um, I have made you all aware that I received a uh, phone call from Christine Cathcart. The individual that we hired to take over the, the bookkeeping position in the financial office, I have the call I received from her said that she just didn't feel that she could do the do the job any longer, and um, so she quit effective immediately. And I think that was a week ago. Monday. Just last Monday. Um, so we're back right back where we started with the uh, with the bookkeeper's position. I do have some thoughts about that, but I don't really want to throw these gentlemen out again right now. Can we table it for the next meeting? Uh, we, can table it, at the end? we can table it to an executive session at the end just so that we don't throw them out again. Okay. Um, the uh, I think we were on the right track. I think Craig would tell you, other than scheduling difficulties and, and some other issues, but that, that had it worked as we wanted it to work, it would have been very effective uh, once she was actually trained and, and ready to go. But we just had way too many strikes against us, and we did not anticipate the fight over the desk chair that, that ensued. We need to do a bottom and second chair, is that what it amounts to? We still may have to buy a second chair. Uh, yeah, don't do stuff, sorry. Um, another issue that, that came up, uh, as you were all aware, I let you all know what happened with the, the listers and the abstract, and the fact that they asked for an extension. Uh, the State told Mike Bills, who's the chair of the, of the listers, that in fact he just needed the select board chair's signature on this document to be able to apply for the extension. That wasn't the case. He actually needed approval by the select board to file for the extension. The extension was sent anyway with just the one signature. So what we need to do now is ratify that extension request that was sent to the state. Do we all understand what happened? Yeah. Oh. Well, we, I'll make the motion that we ratify the uh, abstract filing extension did to the Lister's a, office. Did we get a copy of that did you, for, for the correct language? I think that was the one we got in the battle over, was it not? We got into a battle over it, and I do believe I have a I don't know where the it was. It was in the shuffle. I, yeah. I, I well, I was, was going to make the motion so we can have the discussion. And, Right, I just want to make sure the motion, the right words, right. Right. The motion was, was worded appropriately. The abstract is the uh, grant list, right? Yes. It's a preliminary grant list with all the That's why I call it the abstract. Okay. Yeah. Should the motion be request to ratify the request from the listers to file no. for an extension on the abstract filing. 
you know, we need to ratify what, <coughs> what the commissioners were asking for. And I think I believe it's an up to one month extension. It's a 30 day extension. A 30 extension, day extension. That's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask that in my, my afterwards in my comments how long would you be requesting? I can't put a finger on it. Okay, what? Well, chapter and verse when I do. I know it needs Okay, so, so let's, let's just phrase the motion to be um, to ratify the listener's request for an extension of the lodging of the abstract grand list for whatever term they actually did request. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion on that as to what happened, why it happened? Can I ask why do we have an, an, an idea of why mm -hmm. was it? Was why, it? why did they had to have a request? Oh yes. Um, See how politically correct can I be? Um, Two reasons. The, the working environment is such that only one individual at a time can actually do a lot of the computer work that is necessary to, to file this grand list. At the time the request was, or the request for an extension was uh, filed, they had not yet completed the trailers from the campgrounds, and the state had not yet sent down the uh, land use list. So those two, those are two vital pieces to lodging the, the abstract. Mm -hmm. So that was why they requested the additional time to finish the document. Just as a matter of course, I can tell you the document was filed today. It was filed this morning. The abstract was filed? The abstract was filed this morning. The uh, change of appraisal notices have gone out, so this this extension ended up costing us about a week and a half, somewhere in that vicinity. So, you know, it's, I mean, it's I was after just, the fact. I'd like to, you know, I mean, I didn't know if it was because of there. It was, yeah, yes. Thank you. you okay. You gave a good yes. So, all those in favor of ratifying the listers' request for an extension on the abstract grand list. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, now we're legal. It's nice to be legal after the fact, isn't it? Um, well, you can make a motion out of session as long as you ratify it after. And as you just pointed out, it's a moot point anyway. It has been filed. Right. Time. That's what I was wondering when they were anticipated. Right. I mean, I mean, the thing was, was that were they waiting on two properties to get entered yeah. in? and no. Or was there a thousand properties that needed to get re-entered in? And, it was going to be. There was some data that needed to be input. There were some numbers that needed to be changed. Um, right, and that's the question, you know. So that also brings question. that also brings up the next point of timing for setting the uh, the tax rate for the You're tax bill. Right on the line, right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. So the way I understand this, today being the sixteenth, it was filed today. The change of appraisal notices were mailed today. The property owners, I believe, had two weeks, two weeks 14 days. from the time they received their change of appraisal notice to request um, a grievance hearing with the listers. The listers, I believe, have up to two weeks, from what I understand, mm -hmm. to hold those grievance hearings and get back to the taxpayer with the response to the, to the grievance. After that happens, they the... don't have to use those two weeks. It depends how many people show up. Well, that's true. If there's nobody <laughs> shows up, right, they don't right. have to take that time. But, right. but there's, there's a 14-day window there. Um, after that fact, then they can lodge the grand list with whatever changes they, they come out of grievance with. And it then goes to the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont will return it approved at some point in time, hopefully only a matter of days. But can be <clears> usually <throat> two weeks. But first, first quarter taxes are due on the 29th, and the tax bills have to be out 30 days in advance, which really means they need to be out by July 25th. And by counting the days right now, it's getting very, very close. As to whether, when the tax collector prints the tax bills, whether he changes August 29th to September 4th, 5th, whatever, you'd have to flip the calendar to find out on Labor Day holiday, but nonetheless, that becomes problematic for a lot of people because this has already been set. It was set at town meeting. People do mark their calendars. They do wait for these things to show up. Banks and mortgage companies and whatever. But anyway, 
We're, we're close right now. They did lodge it today. It's in the mail, and the change notices have gone out. And if everything goes smooth, I think that sometime toward the uh, third week of July, you should be, the board should be in a position to um, consider setting a tax rate. So that's the question. We would like to set something tentatively for the latter part of that week to what, set a tax rate? Yeah. The week of the 21st. Of July, right? 21st through the 25th, and again, it's all dependent on circumstances on the ground. You know, we're waiting for the state to get back. And we're going to have to get wait. through grievance first. And yeah. by then, it'll have to be 48 hours, right? No, before we post the, it here. The, the state, this would not be set up until preliminary now. The state um, will have to, once that grant list is lodged, come back with the education numbers. We can't, send, we can't set the tax rate without the education numbers anyway. Right. And then just to, to really monkey wrench the works, the person who is responsible for printing out the tax bills is going on vacation the week of the 28th through the 4th. She will not be back until the 4th. And I'm filling her position in the town clerk's office and quite frankly, I can't produce those tax bills. So. It'll be before she leaves? Or, or after she, she gets back? Yeah. If it's after she comes back, then those, the dates are going to have to be changed. It will be delayed to allow the, the 30 days for the payment of taxes. It would move it into sometime <coughs> in September. Now, just for comparatives, last year the select board didn't set a tax rate until the 28th of August. Tax bills didn't get out. Well, they got out just around the beginning of, uh, right after Labor Day, I guess. And first quarter were due August, October 4th, something like that, Joe? Yeah. Fifth, sixth, something like that. But we extended it two days. Right. So do you have a you have any feelings? Do you want to go ahead and try to set something tentatively for the end of that week, the 21st of July, just hoping that every all the pieces have fallen into place? I'm not planning to be anywhere that week. And that was part and that was part of this question is to who's got vacations, who's got right. Because end of July is <laughs> I mean, technically, I'd like to do it more like the 23rd before somebody leaves for vacation. Although, if I dump it on her in two days, it's she doesn't have either. Put her on the night show. Mm -hmm. Well, if she prints them, I mean, oh, well, we, some we, of us can come and dump it off. We, we, we them in on Saturdays by request. We could stuff them. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. I mean, like, I don't need to stop them. We can get front. But. You know, there again, it's all up to you. Do you have obligations that week that you couldn't you couldn't come in to have a meeting? Uh, what's what would you like to do? You got a vacation schedule, Bob? You taking off? Okay, so uh, you can do this. That's, you that's can do this on you can do this on the seventh. You can. I mean, it's just part of just. It's you a heads up. You don't get heads up. You know, let's find out when they schedule grievance hearings. Yeah. That'll give you another window. So well, that's okay. true. That gives 14 days to work. I mean, you can set this on the seventh, but that's still going to be up in the air because you're waiting on the state, and you're waiting on the list just to file with the state before the state can get back, et cetera, et cetera. I wouldn't necessarily that's schedule right. one now, but just put out there that if people are planning vacations, that's not going to be the best time to go from this point of view, from the setting of tax rate point of view. Yeah, I'm not planning on taking any vacations. Okay. Right then. So we'll think. just. Leave it alone and hope that the stars my boss are, says something different that I don't know yet. The yeah. stars are all aligned and it all works right. And because I've threatened to quit two offices if, in fact, they come out the week of the 28th, the tax bill. And I'm just one minute before you. No, -uh. we had that discussion. I won. Uh, okay, the um, Grafton Road culvert RFP we dealt with. We already talked about we'll that. With Kurt. Uh, the Wyndham County Humane Society, we don't have a contract. Uh, we do. I think we have housing. a copy, but it's the I same contract as it was last year. In essence. And, and, it, and we actually used it this last year, too. Oh, we used it um, several times. Years. I don't think I have a contract. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got a. I know, I don't have a copy of it. I got it right here. It looks like that. But anyway, you can use that one if you want. <laughs> and email. Okay, this, this basically is, is for. Flat fee, is it not for the for that, the housing yeah. and the lodging of the dogs? Yeah, and you can wait another couple of weeks on this if you want to review it more in depth. You can change fees that uh, the town actually sets the fees for the lodging. Um, I'm encouraging all towns to raise the fee to thirty dollars per animal to better offset the cost of the town bringing straight 
into WC. I believe we're at 25 right now. Would you, would you like to have copies of this to consider for the next meeting? And I can give a copy to Warren. I mean, it just came in not that long. I mean, it'd long. be interesting. I mean, if they suggested that we do something better, we should probably review it. Yeah. Okay, so if you'd be kind yeah. enough okay. to we'll make copies for, of that. We'll put it on the agenda for the seventh. Okay. Any other business? <coughs> okay. Uh, let me just make note before we, we do the executive sessions that we postponed that there is an error on the meeting schedule. The next regular meeting is July 7th, not 2nd, at 6 p.m. If not before. If not before. And there will be a public hearing on the Scott Bridge. Um, what? On the 3rd. Is that the 2nd, you said? It says on seven. here the 2nd. It's the 7th. The 7th. I was going to say, it looked like a 9 on mine. Yeah, I probably made a 9 out of it. And then we'll have the V trans hearing on the 30th. I keep right. looking at the calendar and looking at you. What? Is there a reason that um, public meetings have not been going out on the town list there lately? They were a couple of years back. They will again. Lately, yes. they have not, like the Scott Bridge thing, or for a while the talk was that we're going to put like the agenda for the meeting out beforehand. And that's it happened for actually a while that's something we need to stop doing that. Other business. Um, any of these special meetings or changes in anything like the public is generally not aware. Location. Things like this contract coming up or the sheriff coming up or any of these other things that we've taken action on as a town. That the no one knows about the new the new open meeting law that the legislature just passed is going to change a lot of rules, which is all the wording for the executive sessions today that we, we heard. Um, yes, the, the website will now have the agendas posted 48 hours in advance. That's one of the new rules. Um, I'm hoping to see, because those meetings are listed on our agendas, they should be part of, of whatever is, is posted on the website. We have a question in to, um, I think it's just to the other clerks at this point in time, but it'll go further, as to whether or not posting the video link for the meetings itself will satisfy the requirement of having minutes posted within five days of the meeting, since they can actually sit and watch the video of the actual meeting itself. So we don't know yet, we haven't received an answer on that. Um, but the laws have changed, which will tighten all this up. Yeah, I've <clears throat> read that. They, the were, they have been somewhat flexible in years past. We have done it both ways. And either way, there have been issues with doing it. My question is that we have a town-wide listserv mm -hmm. where people have the option to get news direct from the town. Well, they, they technically have to just have to sign up. I mean, it's right, still yes. functioning. Mm -hmm. Right, my, my point being that the only thing in the last few months that's gone out that's yeah. gone out has been the link. Not any news about anything, nope. not a request for open positions, not you know, meeting times, not agendas, nothing. Nothing. We're right. not communicating with the public. That's and so good. then you get people like me who later get to call you guys at home and ask questions about things like why did we not find out about these things beforehand? Right. Before we signed contracts and made decisions. And we have methods that we've used in the past and we've let them fall by the wayside. Well, but you also have to be fair with the fact that, that this board can only pull things together so quickly. Which is the beauty of email, because as soon as you say it, it can be sent out to everyone who signed up. That's very true, but my, my point is we've got enough other issues on our plate right now that we're trying to deal with that this is just something that has come to everybody's attention just recently. So therefore, we haven't had at that particular issue as a focus until this new law came into into our, our position. And now, this new law actually frames not just putting it on the website, but also where we post it in town in hard copy. I just want to be very clear. I'm not talking about using the website. I'm not talking about the open meeting laws. You're talking, I'm talking about the listserv. I'm understand. just talking about the listserv, which we've been using for, what, four, five, five, six years? Five years? Well, we've been I've, using been, the I've been. And we had a higher level of communication with the public. And in the last 18 to 24 months, we've let that slip down to next I never even knew about the listserv, so. 
We did not even Tell push people one. to sign up for it at town meeting again this year. Two years ago, we failed to do that. So we're missing out on opportunities. It's the same thing we complained to Leland and Gray for failing to do, failing to reach out to the public. Well, that's very true, but I, again, I have to I have to point out that that's not the responsibility at this, this point in time. What happened at town meeting this year is not the responsibility of this board. Because we're not the ones that, that failed to do that. Well, your point's taken that we can move forward, but this is not the fault of the three individuals sitting here right now, the fact that that wasn't pushed at town meeting. And as, a, as my husband's the one that runs the listserv, I'm well aware of the fact that it hasn't been used very extensively over the past few years. But again, he's not the one that, that generates the announcements that go out. They have to come to him. And if they don't come to him, then he can't send them out. So, you know, again, point taken. But there will be changes both to the website and I'm assuming to the listserv as well once we get the different pieces in place with the agenda for example, on the website, because it has to be posted there, it can certainly go out via the you know, yeah. listserv yeah. as well. Okay. Um, under other business, yep. can we um, deal with some of, were you ready to deal with some of the open meeting law requirements by July 1st, or do you want to wait that? What, what? I mean, it was like, it was the, you need to, they, they, they suggested that we picked a, locations for postings? Well, we actually technically... Have we already required uh, it says three? Uh, according, to, according to everything that I've read in this, this communique from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, uh, we essentially have a, a full year to come into compliance. Okay. Um, these are suggestions of how you get there. Uh, the, normally the, the postings for town used to be, I'm not sure if they're still being followed, used to be in the clerk's office yep. and both post offices. So there are already three that have been designated as official. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, so you have you would add to the library. There are five designated that are listed out on the board. The What's the fifth? Board. Um, I, have I often well, I often use yeah. this bulletin board in the hallway because not everybody makes it yeah. out of the time. But that bulletin board has um, has the five locations listed on it. Okay. And West Townsend, it depends on when I get things out, so whether it gets in the mail or I drive all the way up there. So West Townsend has been shortchanged. But it's always at the library, it's always at the post office, and it's always in the clerk's office for those who want to see. And we will get we will get better on the on the town list, sir. Um, right, I that lacks is needed to make. We will get better. I, on way, I was, way I was interpreting, they were suggesting that we do something before July first. That's fine. That was just a, but a if, it's, if, it's, if it's already in place, then we, I didn't know where we actually were posting things. Uh, you know, I just knew it here and this. There, there was others. There, there's lots of bits and pieces of this. There's a lot. And to designate, designate the notice and meeting agenda postings and prepare the website to receive agendas and uh, the minutes. And like I said, we've got the question of the minutes and the video feed because that link goes up within usually three days for uh, onto the website. Okay. So, any other, any other uh, business? Any other other? Any other other? Yeah. No other other. Okay, hearing none, then I will entertain a motion to move. Oh, let me find the paper again. Got to get the right? Uh, see, we're doing, which one are we doing here? Um, oh, this one's going to cause some commotion. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to move to, or I would entertain a motion to move into executive session to discuss possible action against a, a public officer or employee under 1 VSA section 313A3. So moved. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor of moving into executive session to discuss possible action against a public officer signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. Motion passes, and I would ask both Craig and Joe to stay for this. Eight forty-seven or something. I can't see the clock. It's too dark in the corner. Eight forty-seven. Eight forty-eight. Eight forty-seven. Eight forty-seven. And uh, there will be no resolution whatsoever on the. Um, 
what did we say? Uh, the possible action against a public officer or employee. There will be no, no action taken. Um, now we're going to turn around and do it again. I told you that how many of well, he erased the board. I erased the board. There were supposed to be there were seven of them up there originally. We cut it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, that uh, I'll, I'll entertain a motion that we move into executive session to discuss the employment of a, of an let's see. Yes, it would be the employment of an employee under one VSA section thirteen. 313A3, I'm getting tired. Employment of an employee. Well, that's how it's phrased in the okay, that's fine. statute. Second. Is Dale. there a second, Dale? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. So, now the, the big question becomes we most likely are going to come out with a resolution. Do you want to stick around for that? Two minutes, well, minutes, hopefully it won't take too long. All right, so we're going to come out of executive session at 9, 9 p.m. And would somebody like to make a motion concerning the appointment of, uh, what was the language? An employee and he and, and, and to discuss employment of an employee. And it, yeah, honest to gosh, that's what I it believe, says. I believe I got a copy of that down, so yeah. Employment of an employee. Yeah. So we want to make the motion? I'll make the motion. Oh, let me write something down for you. I want to know how to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the question, I think. I want to make sure I pronounce everything and do it right. Why don't you read it, Kathy, and then you can... Okay. Um, I'll, so I'll, I'll, right. I'll, yeah. I'll entertain a motion that uh, the select board hire uh, Christine Gross Cook as bookkeeper uh, for the Town of Townsend, effective July 1st, 2014. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, hiring Christine Gross Cook to, to be the bookkeeper for Townsend signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Is there any other business that needs to be dealt with? Um, just that I will um, check in on, on uh, getting the fountain turned on. Okay. That's what it's got to work, but that will um, see what we can do about that. Find out the status of it is right now. Okay. Here I know Jeff was going to walk on. Okay. Ooh, I thought I paid it. It was going to paint it. I don't know where I am talking in three weeks. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, so, so, hearing no other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 9.02. So moved. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion, are we meeting adjourned?